my final point number 10, we're like about to finish. Don't argue. I, I made a graph here, like just for, just for hilarity value. This is like a, this is a graph. This is purely, no, this is super scientific and I'll explain. This is a graph like of how much a radiology resident is likely to argue over time as a function of PGY year. And uh, you start off and you're like PGY2 and like, you don't know anything. You wouldn't argue with like your attendings. Like you wouldn't, you wouldn't like to, you wouldn't argue because you just like don't know. And then here at the end of your PGY2, you like start taking call. And suddenly you become like the world expert on the ACR appropriateness criteria. <laughs> you're like calling the ER like, no, this is a non-complicated headache without neurologic symptoms, doesn't need a head CT. I don't know how, like you haven't even read those things. It's just like morphed into your mind. You're like, uncomplicated pancreatitis, doesn't need a CT. Next case. Well, you know, like after time, like that, you get kind of beat down. <laughs> Because you're like tired of calling them all the time. You're like, oh man, like, and you start to realize that like by calling them, at least for me, I would call them and argue with them. And then I realized that who, the, the night that it was ruining was mine. Because I would be like angry for like an hour. I would like miss things on subsequent cases because I was still mad about the conversation like I just had. So here you get kind of beat down. You kind of realize that like you're, you're more likely than not to, uh, to be wrong. Here, you kind of get some confidence again. You get, you're like, man, I'm like, Get, I'm like a senior resident now. I'm really good at this call stuff. You start to argue again. I don't know. Something will happen. This kind of levels out. Like eventually, like you'll argue a little bit. But uh, out here, this doesn't really count for the like passive aggressive arguing, which is like usually what this becomes. Where you call them and tell them, "I'm going to do this study, but I just want you to know that it's stupid." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's sort of like that's sort of like fellow level arguing right there. <laughs> uh, so why doesn't this work? It makes you super frustrated because I mean, you're talking to some like intern in the ER, like, I mean, they, they don't know what they're doing either. Uh, it just makes your job harder. Like just do the study. And like, as you get better, like you realize at, at first, like this curve up here, this is like, this is like a combination of like a fear because you're afraid that like doing another study is going to be hard for you to read and increase your work. And you don't, you're uncomfortable with the whole situation. And uh, so you tend to argue because you're like, oh, I don't want to read another study. Down here, you like start to realize that like it's actually, I can argue with you for 10 minutes or I can read your study in five minutes. And it's like just an efficiency thing. Uh, you're playing the odds. I mean, like these people like are going to be right and you're going to be wrong. And it's going to be preserved there and it's going to look terrible. Uh, the ER has the ultimate argument that you cannot win. Does anyone know like what that is? And what do you think? Well, it, yes, that's true. Like, it, 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 I hate that. They're like, are you going to come down here and see the patient? That is one, but the, no, this, that, that you can actually win because you can actually go see the patient. You won't, but, and you shouldn't. <laughs> Our attending wants it. Your attending's not here. So you're not going to call like soon me, like at home and be like, hey, soon me, like I want to block this like CTA of the head and neck. She's going to be like, oh, hell no. Like just do the study. Like, and so, so ultimately they like get to study. And uh, I just I want you to imagine like what the ER is like. They have a button, it doesn't cost very much to push it. They're like, all right, it, it doesn't cost them really anything. Like maybe it slows down the dispo of their patient by like 30 minutes. Odds of paying off like are low, but like when it does pay off, it's like it hits big, right? Like, I mean, if you like order a PE study and someone with a low risk of PE and then it comes back positive, you're like cha-ching, like jackpot. There's like another area in life that's very similar to that, a slot machine. People will sit at these things and play them for hours. Like it's intermittent feedback. That's what you remember. You don't remember like the hundred times you pressed that button and you were wrong. You were like, yes, I won 10,000 nickels in the, five, in the five cent slots. I have one more case, then we'll finish here. This is my case, this is from when I was a fellow. This patient like had a renal transplant. He had like persistent bacteremia. They're like, he's got back pain. We think he has discitis osteomyelitis. He just had an MR of his total spine. Same indication, like back pain, bacteremia. We think he has discitis osteomyelitis. They're really worried about spine infection. So then the conversation that I just described like happens. I'm like, this is a really stupid study, but like, I'm gonna do it anyway. That like passive aggressive, like arguing. So this was his old study and he had like all this degenerative disc disease and like, but like nothing really to speak of, lumbar spine, he's got like all these enhancing like Schwarl's nodes. 
like nothing really like going on. So I wasn't like too worried. Here's a study eight days later. He's got like suddenly like he's got fluid in his disc. He's got like all this fluid in the prevertebral space. He's got enhancement there. I was like, well, that's weird. That's that's like kind of new. So then I like start looking at the lumbar spine. Here you can just see more of that. And I look at this and I'm like, well, is this even the same patient? There's like, this is all phlegmon in the spinal canal. This is totally new. This was not there eight days before. If there was ever an argument that I was gonna win, it was this one. This guy had a total, totally negative MRI of his spine eight days before. This is ridiculous. I mean, just the change like is crazy. So then I had to call those people and be like, yeah, I remember that BS study we were talking about? Yeah, that's, that's horrible. This guy has horrible disease like called neurosurgery. That's like never a happy situation. And like, imagine like how much worse it would have been if I didn't do the study and they get it the next day. And then they're like, you know, we talked to your fellow Brent and he like didn't do this. He blocked the study. And then this guy has this awful thing and his treatment was delayed. And eh, just, just think about that curve, just flatten that curve out. And like, when you're thinking about arguing, just like, don't do it. And also listen to them. Like a lot of times there's, they like have information that they're not telling you either by on accident, sometimes on purpose, I have no idea. But like sometimes they know the patient was transferred here for discitis osteomyelitis or whatever, like that hand fracture. They knew, they knew the person had a hand fracture. They didn't tell me. If they wanted to get a CT of the hand, I would have been like, no, this is BS, like that film is normal. And uh, then I would have been proven wrong.